Greg. Why are you petting your Black Rapid? <laughs> Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting One Day, number 65. And once again, Kathy Azar is here with me and we're enjoying her every single week <laughs> more and more. We'd love to have that different perspective in the show. So we started out with uh, an interesting little fun segment that we just did, <laughs> which was interesting. But there's a reason for it. And that's because I forgot my black rapid on Saturday, Kathy, and I was so upset. I was like, uh, I was so out of sorts and so messed up, and it completely threw me off because I didn't have my black rapid strap at the the shoot that I shot the other day. I missed mine, but I don't have oh, it. I couldn't. I, I I went through my camera bag like four times. <laughs> it's got to be in it, here. Exactly, and I went through my truck. I'm like, it has to be in and here you're somewhere. You're so organized. You have all I, your stuff. I, I left it, it in my other camera bag. Well, here's and here was the problem. Here's what I did. I put it, I have my um, shape shifter camera bag, which is also a laptop bag. Instead of putting it in the bag with the camera stuff, I put it in the slot where the laptop goes. And that was why I forgot Didn't it. See it. <laughs> I'm sure that it will never happen again. <laughs> it's one, usually it's one of those things where you do it once, you know, you're not going to let it happen again. So. I have recommended oh my, my Black Rapid to so many people because yep. it's so comfortable. I have a bad back, bad neck, and that thing mm -hmm. saves me because it oh, doesn't yeah. put any pressure on the neck or the low back. Mm -hmm. And when I shot my cousin's wedding in Tahoe, last mm -hmm. year you gave me this yep. to borrow the double which strap. is amazing as well because your cameras are so well balanced and the fact if well, I had to adjust it a little bit after you let me borrow it. <laughs> more than but, a little but the fact that it would fit you and also fit me yep. is fantastic just one piece of equipment that doesn't mm -hmm. have to be different many different sizes that can be adjusted it's that's awesome. the dr1 which is the older double strap there's also okay. a newer one I don't remember the name of it but uh, I'm gonna see if black graphic can send it over and we can do some tests on that although I think the new one isn't gonna fit me I think it's too I'll small it. for me <laughs> when you said the Nikon one's coming out soon too that yes was made by Black Rapid yes so that'll be um, exciting to see yeah there are rumors that it is coming very very soon so yeah and by the way you can check out that video interview that I did uh, with all of a sudden I forget his name oh. from Black Rapid darn I'm so sorry uh, I'll look it up real quick uh, Black Rapid he was very informative it was a good interview Damn, I should have looked that up before. Yes. Is it Joe? Jeez, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible host. Uh, Joe, it is Joe. Yeah, so it was Joe from Black Rabbit that I did that inter interview with. So check out that if you want to hear a little bit about their culture and the way Nikon works. And of course, the, the build of the strap itself. So hopefully we'll get some, uh, some cool stuff and that thing will be coming out very, very soon. Speaking of cool stuff, there are some interesting cameras Amazing. that came out last week. Um, the first one is the Sony A7S, which is the first full frame mirrorless camera. Just the fact that Sony is venturing into this, they, they're obviously vested in the mirrorless very heavily and they think that it's going to go somewhere. 12 megapixels in a mirrorless camera and at 409,000 ISO. It's crazy. Yeah, the, the quality is really good. You watch this video where they start out at, what was it, 1600, I think it was, and they bump it all the way up to 409,000 ISO. Wow, and the quality is really good, not very yeah. noisy. It uh, felt like you were watching a time-lapse video, it's, yep. it felt, you felt like the sun was coming up, but it was just the change in the ISO, yeah. it was amazing. Big difference, um, $4,000 for the body plus lenses, so that's on the high side, but it is around, you know, it's in the middle of what a full frame camera would Absolutely. normally cost, so yeah, that's that's interesting, there's some, some really good reviews of that out there so far. Uh, another camera that came out, once again, another game changer, I believe is the new Pentax 645Z. 52 megapixel CMOS sensor without the filter. Um, 8265 by 6192 pixels. That is a lot, a lot of pixels to play with. Uh, ISO 100 to 24.8, uh, 27 point AF, 
uh, sensor AF system. I don't know how good their AF system is. I've never really played with a Pentax, but um, you know, for a medium format, pushing all that glass, it's definitely not going to be as fast as your medium, as your 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 um, 35 frame. millimeter full frame or you know systems. Just the way it is, because you're moving more glass, there's more stuff to do. Why don't you explain real quickly to people who don't know what medium format is, the difference between medium format and full frame. That's a good point. Medium format has basically a larger sensor. Instead of being 35 millimeter, which is a little bit smaller, which is basically the full size of a, of a 35 millimeter film, 645 is a two and a quarter size film, so the sensor is going to be about this tall versus about this big, and that means you have a lot more room a lot more light being gathered by those individual pixel pixels and you're going to get a lot better color um so this is interesting so is this the kind of thing that's going to be used more in studio versus out shooting sports or something yeah, like that yeah. slower only a three mega uh sorry three frames per second okay. in jpeg large yeah this is only going to be a, this is a you know a, a portrait camera a studio camera that kind of thing the best point about this is that number one they're talking eighty five hundred dollars for the body us and they're releasing 13 new lenses to go with it it's amazing it's not like they're just dropping it with you know two or three or five lenses they have 13 lenses here that are going with it all the way from a 400 5.6 all the way down to a super wide 23 millimeters is that what that says 25 millimeter <laughs> The graphic is really tiny on my <laughs> screen. Just getting old. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. So that's a really wide range of glass that you you can basically just jump right into, buy whatever you need. I'm sure the glass the the glass is not yet. Jump right into it. It's sure. not going to be cheap. But okay. this is still going to be less expensive compared to your Hasselblads, compared to your your Mamiya's. Um, this is going to be an interesting system. And this is also the reason why I think Nikon or Canon, one or the other, is going to jump into the medium format world very soon. It's interesting to see who comes out first. Yes. So that, uh, I think it could be fun. Um, this looks like fun. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I saw that one night looking through my um, feed and saw that and I thought, Greg is going to be all over this. This guy took a flower pot and a piece of glass. And duct tape. And a little bit of duct tape, which the duct tape is a little bit sketchy. Uh -huh. And he got these really cool photos of this, of, of fire and sparks and stuff falling down on top of his camera. Uh -huh. Which realistically, that's all you really need to do is you need to keep those sparks off of the body and you need a little bit of an area, a, a cooler area around the body in order to keep it cool. Basically, a... a just a, some cooler air is all it really is. So One of the quotes it said uh, when he thought about taking it into the fire was, I cried a little when I thought of my Nikon D800 <laughs> going straight to the action, complete with a 24 millimeter capable lens. I don't think I could do this with my camera. You said you would love to try it, but ugh. I would stand there with the camera in hand in full turnout gear and just go like this. No problem. I'd totally do it. And for those of you who don't know what he means, turnout gear is a fire, he's a firefighter, yeah. so he has all the equipment. Full, full, full equipment, SCBA, the whole nine yards, breathing air. Heck yeah, I'd totally do that. The camera probably couldn't make it through that, but when you're doing something like this, why not? You know, it's, it's a one-time thing. Why not? Yeah. It's, it's a one-time thing, you know. Well, this is this is one of those shoots where you get an icon to throw you a bone and you throw okay. you a camera and a body and, you know, it's basically a throwaway. Well, you rent one. Oops, what <laughs> happened? I'm sorry. <laughs> use a cannon for that. That's I'll a perfect use Ooh. for a cannon. <laughs> I didn't say that. He did. <laughs> so, uh, 10 of the most common photo editing mistakes Oh my goodness, this was like right on, right on for all of these items that were in here. This is posted on DIY Photography. And uh, the first mistake, editing the original RAW file, people will go in to, and start editing that JPEG. They don't know any better. The camera set on JPEG, not on RAW. And they'll start editing that original and they can never go back. That's a big one, and you've done this too, right? Over I'm edit the laughing, eyes. I'm laughing, yeah, because when I first <laughs> learned how to edit, I thought I had to do everything, and the yep. rule of thumb should be just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I think I mentioned last week's show that I spent an entire day editing my very first image as I was <laughs> yep. learning Lightroom, and I whitened the the whites of the eyes and the teeth and the mm -hmm. iris and the skin smoothing, and yeah, I have since learned, but. 
Sometimes you have to make the mistakes in order to you learn. You do. I would agree with that. Sharpening the correct focus. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks that the unsharp mask is so that you can fix focus problems. It's not. If it's out of focus, it's junk, it's trash, throw it away, go reshoot, uh, do what you have to do, use another shot. But you cannot fix out of focus images. And it says in here too, sometimes you can even make it worse. Oh yeah. Oh, and believe me, you can definitely over sharpen very mm -hmm. easily and make it look a lot worse. Make it look like crap. This, the next one, you're a big <laughs> on. You've never liked the uh, HDR. I've never been a fan. The only HDRs I like are the ones that you can't tell. Mm -hmm. Any of the other ones, they just look too fake to me. And I'm not into a fake looking photograph. Um, I don't mind a color graded one where you or just with certain tones like blues or you know what I mean magentas whatever right. I don't mind those but I am just not a fan of HDR and overdoing editing and just not my thing. The next one is too much contrast that's yeah. a given. Faking bokeh. <laughs> Tons of these out there. You know what else should be going along with this is those those filters that go on your lens that give you the, the weird looking bokeh, the weird shape bokeh. Oh, I, I I'm not a fan. Those. I thought you were going to say fake skies because some of those can uh, be pretty bad too. Oh, yeah. Fake skies. Nobody. It's impossible to get a, a good looking replacement sky. I've seen a couple, but it has to be very subtle. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult. And that goes to this next one, relying <clears throat> too heavily on actions too. Yep. Actions or <laughs> presets if you're working in Lightroom. I'm already laughing because I'm on to the next one in my brain already. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, <laughs> friends ahead. don't let friends do selective color. Greg is really against selective color. And I agree for oh. the most part. But <laughs> You know, <laughs> some people cringe. think it's artistic. And if you ask me, those people are just people that just don't know any better. Oh, oh, it's just terrible. There's a comment it's at terrible. the bottom of this article that says some of these are not necessarily wrongs or rights, but our personal opinion. And <laughs> Greg definitely is not one to yeah. withhold his opinion. It's um, bad. But you know, so it is artistic license for some people, but agreed, I'm not a big fan of it either. Do something else in the camera to make the image more interesting. Don't try so hard to make it look good. Artistic. Yeah, afterwards. Do it in camera where art should come from. Uh, overcropping, that's an easy one. Too much skin smoothing. Classic. Yeah, Barbie. yeah. You look like yeah. You look like a doll. You look. Uh, you got to be careful with that. Um, like I always say, in my opinion, a photo should look like you didn't do anything to it at all. And those are the best kinds of edits, um, at least in my opinion. Obviously, you can do stuff that's artsy and look better, and you know that can be good. But look, look at what's out there. Look what's good. Look at what's bad, and start to form your own opinion. Do we get to talk about the meerkats next? Yes, let's talk about the meerkats. Oh my goodness, I love this. Um, one of my favorite things to shoot, and probably about 50% of my business, is pet work. Now, I don't get to shoot meerkats, but uh, there's a... But you would go, wouldn't you? Oh my gosh, I would be in heaven. Uh, there's a picture of a photographer um, in Botswana, Will Berard Lucas, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who is... Um, taking pictures of meerkats and they're climbing all over him, his gear. They've learned that humans are not dangerous. So yep. they're actually using the humans as a vantage point to scope out other <laughs> risk factors. And they probably weigh like five pounds oh or something. Oh my gosh, they are all over him and it is adorable. They also have a video posted on here. Just very, very mm -hmm. cute, cute factor, huge. Yep, really neat. Uh, you know what, it didn't say what camera he shot that with. It's probably just like a GoPro a, or something. No, oh, I mean the video part, because yeah. the camera is a Canon. Um, yeah, he's shooting with, with a Canon. It, it shows them with the, you know, the meerkats looking into the camera, or at least mm -hmm. standing at the back of the camera anyway, and sitting up on the top of his 300 or 400 millimeter lens, whatever he has there. So yeah, it's it's definitely pretty cute. And I also like his arm protectors. Looks like he's cut a sweatshirt <laughs> off and turned it wrong uh, backwards so that the elastic part's up here so that when he rests his elbows in the sand, it doesn't hurt. That's yeah, pretty That's cool. a good pretty idea. Clever. Yeah, it's a good idea. Did you have one more you wanted to talk about? Or was um, that it? Um, I think that's it. Okay, well next up, gazillion questions. I can definitely appreciate everything you're saying. Say you do not have a pocket that can sustain a hit from a lens like an 85 millimeter or a 70 to 200. What would you recommend for portraits? First thing I would recommend is starting to look at the used market. Check out your Craigslist, your eBay, that kind of thing. I actually bought my 300 millimeter 2.8 on eBay. Got really lucky. It would, just came back from Nikon service. The guy showed me the paperwork on it that said it had just come back from being serviced at Nikon and there was nothing wrong with it. 
Um, I bought a couple things on eBay and I've been pretty lucky. You gotta be selective. Yeah. You gotta I, be selective. I covet that lens. You've let me use that a couple <laughs> times. Oh. Love that lens. You do, do have to be careful though. I have a friend recently who posted something about trying to buy something on, I don't remember if it was Craigslist or yeah. something else. And after she made a comment, all of a sudden the address changed that it mm -hmm. was coming from. It was just a little mm -hmm. weird. So if, if you think it's dicey, trust your gut. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that definitely. Uh, next thing is I would check out the uh, third party manufacturers like Sigma. Maybe it's not their newest, latest, and greatest, but maybe it's one that's a couple models old. They can be really good. Um, same with the Nikon 80 to 200. If you're a Nikon shooter, the Nikon 80 to 200 28. It is a gorgeous lens. Produces some really awesome images. It's still a 2.8, but it's not super fast. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're using it with like a D7000 or a higher body, um, they, they're still good lenses. Uh, 85 1.8 is a really good from Nikon and Canon. Pretty sure Canon makes a 1.8 version instead of the 1.4, which is you know a lot of money. But uh, check out the, the the aftermarket manufacturers, and I'm sure you can find something. Other than that, just save up for a good one and buy the right one. Uh, don't settle for the second best. You're much better off saving Absolutely. the money and getting what you really want, and then um, uh, go on that route. Although something that Kathy and I were just talking about is that and here's my phone. Uh, something that Kathy and I were talking about. You can, if you're not sure, you want to try something out for a while, renting it is always a good option to try out a camera. Mm -hmm. But worst comes to worst, your value stays up of that equipment. So if you're not sure, you're not going to lose that much if you're going to end up, if you buy it and try it and you don't like it in six months, you sell it, you're only going to be two, three, four hundred dollars less then you just upgrade to the yeah. next one. So. One of the other things I was thinking is some of the other uh, camera providers or lens rental places, mm -hmm. you can also get refurbished lenses, lenses or used lenses from some of those places, which might be a, a more reliable way to go if you're looking for used. And they'll typically give you a better warranty or some kind of a warranty with that. Yeah. Yeah. They may so. be a little more expensive than you might find on Craigslist, but at least you have that peace yeah. of mind. Yeah, peace of mind is always a good thing. I have to bracket seven photos, one scene, one normal, three under, three over. There's no bracket feature on my D3200, question mark. How would I do this then? Well, mommy the bommy. <laughs> He's been dying to say that. <laughs> I, just, I just think it's such a cool nickname for the internet, mommy the bommy. Uh, obviously, you probably Googled this or went on the YouTube and did a search for bracketing and you found my bracketing video, that's great. So, what's the answer to that? Well, first, I don't know what you mean by one scene. Um, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Basically, with your bracketing, you will pick your normal in the middle. This is the normal way, anyway. You find your normal exposure in the middle, and then you would shoot three shots underexposed and three shots overexposed with, say, a third or a half stop in between, or maybe a full stop in between if you wanted to go that far. Uh, typically with our digital cameras nowadays, one stop or say one and a half stops in, you know, under and one and a half over is plenty and I like to do either a third or a half stop difference in between each one. All the higher end cameras, your 7000s and up, I don't think the D5200 or 5000 series has it, but you're able to automatically bracket and the camera will automatically change those exposures for you. But other than that, if you only have a 3200, it's going to be really good practice for you to remember how your exposures, your, your stops work and they're changing. And so um, just do it manually. Why don't you explain real briefly for people who don't know why you'd want a bracket? Um, why do you want a bracket? <laughs> <laughs> Bracketing is really good for, say, landscape or product photos. Uh, I use it mostly for landscapes, that kind of thing when you're not sure if your exposure is right on or if you really want to do HDR, uh, <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> you, would, you would use it. Uh, basically, if your exposure, you're not sure if your exposure is going to be right on, go ahead, do your exposure bracketing. Maybe, and maybe it isn't a full set of seven. Maybe it's only you know, one or two under and that's it. Maybe you're, instead of doing you know, that full range, maybe it's just a couple of them here or there. It's not a full bracket because most likely your overs you know, a couple of them you might not use, you might just be wasting frames. So, and when I'm bracketing, I usually only use three frames. I don't think I've That's ever it. really bracketed. I just check it in camera and yeah. then add the exposure if I need it. I yeah. just have, I don't really By the way, use for it. don't use bracketing when you're shooting portraits, um, pets, sports, any of that stuff. 
that's not what bracketing is. That's for. probably why I don't use bracketing. Not, that's about all I shoot. Yeah, shoot. It's not the time to use bracketing. Bracketing is when you're sitting on a tripod, you're or you're taking your time and you're set up and you're uh, you're just not quite sure of that that scenic or whatever something like that. There's there's a few other times you can use it, but uh, for your normal portraits and people moving, guaranteed the really good one is going to be the one where it's super underexposed and it's going to look bad. I just noticed that you still have your black wrap it on. I do. I can't <laughs> take it off. Oh I can't take it off. <laughs> May I ask what software you used to create the video? Did it automatically time the beat changes to the photo transitions? So I tried using iPhoto and then I tried using iMovie and I got frustrated and I just said forget it. So I ended up doing this in Adobe Premiere. Basically, it's this little video that I did, a slideshow that I did, it's still five minutes long of almost a thousand photos. I knew it was gonna be a thousand photos. There's a, that's a lot of images for you to sit through. So I'm always thinking about timing and you know keeping things moving and I want you to sit through it as long as possible. So that's why I kept the time down to like a tenth of a second or maybe it was leaving a little bit less. That's why I couldn't get iPhoto to work and iMovie I just got frustrated with and I couldn't get it to do anything that I wanted it to do. He was telling me that it wouldn't <laughs> it wouldn't work at all and I went and did some Googling and I read the manual. Oh, well, fine. Something you tell me to do all the time. Fine. Well, guess what? Yes. <laughs> but you know what? Apple's the king of being intuitive. It should have just been intuitive, intuitive. but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I went to what I know, which is Premiere, and I threw it together. No, I did not time it. I just got lucky and picked a good song, which actually that song comes from YouTube. If you uh, Google uh, YouTube music or YouTube free songs or something like that, I forget what it is. Uh, I'll put a link to the page in the description. Basically, it allows you to download those songs, add them to your collection. They're free. It does not going to cost you anything. To use that music and uh, so I just picked a good song and it worked. And I was telling Greg I usually use either iMovie or Animoto which is a software um, web-based that you can create really cool videos with and it's very intuitive. I've really enjoyed using that a lot and there is a version for it's free but there is a version for pro photographers too and Greg had found another one that we might do a uh, comparison in yep. the future. Uh, he wants to do a competition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and actually you can do it directly in YouTube also. It's going to be very simple. Really? Yes, you could do it right on YouTube. So that's another free way to do it. Uh, I want to try out this and do a competition between this one called from Photodex called Pro Show. They have a number of different levels. They have a web version, a gold level, mm -hmm. and a producer level. Uh, I have the producer one, and you can do a lot with it, and I have done a lot with it in the past. Typically, I use it for like a wedding slideshow or something like that when the client asks me to tell me to you make how one. to do it. <laughs> hey, you've done them before, so have I. All so right. hey, we'll make it happen. I think it'll be a competition, and it'll be interesting to say the least. You got, you know what the best part is? We're gonna let you guys choose uh -huh. which one is better. How's that? Are you worried? Sounds good. A little. <laughs> so we'll we'll do that, and uh, hopefully that'll be coming up in the maybe the next month or so, okay. month and a half. We'll make that one happen. It's on. Come, <laughs> coming up next is the Lightroom Mobile. So I tweeted last week that I was gonna do a review of the new Lightroom Mobile for iPad, and here you go. Both Kathy and I did some reviews and talked about this uh, very, very beta or very early version, and Adobe actually tweeted to me to remind me that this is an early build, so basically they're trying to get us to not be too critical Mm -hmm. of this. Um, what is here I think is really good, but I think there is another alternative that I'll talk about later, which I have not purchased yet, that I may just do a review of in the near future and uh, let you know how I like it. But anyway, let's first talk about Adobe Lightroom Mobile and what it does, what it doesn't do, and how it works. Number one is it syncs with Adobe Lightroom 5.4. So you have to be on 5.4 and you, if you want to use it for more than 30 days, you also have to have the Adobe Creative Cloud solution, at least the $9.99 a month one. And so that's, that's I mean, $120 a year isn't that much money. It's not that expensive realistically for what you're getting. Full Photoshop, full Lightroom, and now this. 
So it's not that bad, it's not that expensive in my opinion. This is an additional add-on, which I'm sure they're gonna keep giving us more add-ons, wouldn't you think, and more stuff? I would hope so. They say that the 999 um, package with Lightroom and Photoshop may disappear though, so you might wanna take advantage of mm -hmm. that as quickly as you can. Yeah, although they've ex they've said that um, how many times? They've extended it, extended I know. Extended and extend, extend, so that's a good thing. Anyway, um, so far, so good. I like the application. Let's start off with the interface here. I just grabbed a folder of images. The first thing that I noticed that I did not like is the fact that you can only synchronize a single catalog. I have separate catalogs for each year of my, photo of my digital photographs, and it's easier for me and also keeps the Lightroom moving faster. I don't know how well a Lightroom catalog would perform if it had 175,000 images in it. Mm. So I don't really want to merge all those into one. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty slow. So that's why I keep them separate so that each of them only has 25, 30,000 images till I get to the end of the year. Um, it's a better way for me to work. So hopefully they will at least fix that so that I can work with multiple catalogs. Uh, so I imported this set of images and um, you know, Shows them pretty quickly. This is a new iPad Air. Kathy's actually running on an iPad 2, and she said that the speed really wasn't a difference. Not that I noticed, anyway. If it was, it was so slight it wasn't causing me any problems. Yeah, which is good. So, you know, the, the Air obviously has a much faster processor, faster everything, compared to the iPad 2. So that's good. That means it's optimized well and working well. So that that's definitely a good thing. Um, the main thing that this is for, in my opinion, is going through and picking images or uh, kind of calling through them. The thing what I would do with this, maybe just sit with a client, connect my iPad to my projector, or have them sit next to me looking at the images or pass them around, and then you can easily pick or reject the images just by sliding your finger up and down like this which is pretty neat. Then you can flick to the next one. I get messed up though occasionally. I'm, I'm trying to do something with the image and I hit it and it flags it or unflags. I'm like, oh, don't yeah. do that. So it's kind of, it's very sensitive. Yeah, it is sensitive. And it would be nice, maybe in the future ones, they'll, you know, they'll change something down here where they add a button or something like that down there. The other thing with the flagging though, it does not, when you have your um, uh, thumbnails in the bottom, it doesn't mm -hmm. show which one is flagged or not until you click on the ind individual image and then you'll Correct. have a flag shown here. Yeah. So some people I've seen under the comments have been frustrated by that. So along here, you don't see which ones are flagged until mm -hmm. you actually hit the actual photo. Yes, I would agree with that. It would be nice to have those little icons. Again, I'm sure all of these are things that are going to come up in the future um, and probably pretty quickly. I would think that they're going to keep going and keep releasing yeah. these uh, these features as you go along. But for a first go round, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, as uh, let me tell you the story, I actually imported a bunch of images, 130 some images, and within 15 minutes or so, they were all on the iPad, and I was able to go through all 136 of those images and then pick the ones that I wanted and get rid of the rest. I can't show you that. I wasn't able to record that because they're soccer photos and I didn't want to show all the photos of the kids that were in there. Um, but anyway, it probably took me about the same amount of time doing it on the iPad versus doing it on the computer. Um, you know, I was able to zoom in and see focus. You can definitely zoom in a bit with the smart previews, which is good. And, you know, it, it was just a matter of pick. Okay, you know, that was a pick. And then the next one you know, reject. Okay, that one's a pick. And these were actually PSD files. A couple of these, like this one is actually a PSD file. This is an NEF file. And you can see that I edited out the, the pink bucket right there, purple <laughs> bucket, compared to the original. Yeah. Speaking of which, yeah. I don't like the fact that I can't bring up two images side by side. Yeah. I feel like that's really restrictive and I hope that's one of the features that they, they add into it very quickly because I think it's really needed. Um, and speaking of your bucket, one of the things I would like to be able to do is clone things out too, eventually on here. Yeah, yeah. Can't do that yet either. Although that might be pretty difficult when it comes to your uh, your touch. You know, that might not be easy. Stylus. I, might, I wonder if they'll get like, some of those tools. It's, you could, but it's still a touch. It is. It's still a touch, so it's figuring out how to use that and how to set it up in the UI. Um, I think that that UI, that user interface, is actually really good. I do like the 
the way that this works and the scrolling. Kathy, you were going to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, and it'll show you your EXIF information, your histogram, touch it with two fingers and the histogram disappears, touch it again and it switch places, touch it again and it's gone. Um, touch and hold with the three fingers and it shows you before your, your before and after. I haven't made a whole lot of adjustments to that uh, photo. It was shot pretty well in camera. Um, but that's something to remember, you actually have to hold. I kept thinking that it would click and stay there and mm -hmm. it does not. Um, you can change your exposures, your contrast highlights, and I like the way it brings it up. You can slide down your scale. So it's pretty, pretty like you said, the user interface is great. Yep, and another thing you can do is you can actually bring this back. There was a way to do it that actually kept that. I forget how. There was a way, I touched something at one point and it still kept, oh, I didn't do that before. Yeah, yeah, so there's some presets in there you yeah. can use, but I don't believe you can use your own presets. There are only the presets that are available, I believe, in Lightroom. There was a way that they'd hid this thing on this scale on the bottom, and I forget how I did that. Okay. But somewhere it, it was in there. But it's possible. Yeah. Um, you do have the little flag thing here in the bottom. One other thing that I was frustrated by was that I couldn't, at least, again, at this very early build, I could not filter my images. So I have all these images in this folder, and a lot of them are rejects, and some of them are pics. And so if I'm calling through, and I'm showing all these images, I want to be able to show a client the final, say, three or five images that we've, oh. that we've picked. And there's no way to filter this. Obviously, we can take this photo, and we can share it, we can move it, or create a new collection with it, but at this point, just being able to filter, I think, is super important. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing that would prevent me, possibly prevent me from using this with a client that would push me back over to the regular Lightroom, and I that would I think that would come very quickly. Yeah. We didn't mention you can crop. Yeah, the cropping cool. seems nice and easy, and again, pretty intuitive to be able to drag, drag around and, um, and play with it. Yeah, I had fun playing with it. Yeah, so. Overall, I think it's a good app. Hopefully we can keep these reviews going, especially as they add new features. I'll definitely um, keep up with it and keep updating you guys. Was there anything else we wanted to talk about? I'm sure there's more this? in there that we'll learn as we go. Yeah, um, if there is anything else we know. Oh, slideshow. You can watch a slideshow of images. You can set the different time and the options. Um, your transition, your wipe, your flip, however you want to do it. So that's, that's a good thing. There's no music you can add to it. But for, over- For uh, first go round, not so bad. Yeah, and the big thing that I like is the fact that it, it was fast. Adding these 66 images were, were, was really lightning fast. It pushed it up to the cloud. That is one thing that if you do not want your images in the cloud, whether they're private or not, then you might want to consider another application, which again, I have not purchased yet. Photosmith is another application. I'm going to try and uh, get in touch with them and do a review of this app. Basically, this one syncs with your desktop on the computer, on the local network, and that's it. Uh, it the photos don't get uploaded to the cloud and um, then come back down to your iPad. This was just this would be a local sync only. I'm not sure if it plugs in or if it works through your Wi-Fi, but still, this is a much more advanced application. Single $20 charge, and so I'll work on getting a review of this one for you guys, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So another something else for us to do, more content mm -hmm. to go. So um, overall, we like Adobe Lightroom Mobile. We may or may not use it for certain things. What do you think you'll use it for in this stage? Playing. <laughs> Playing, that's it. That's and it. maybe showing clients some images yeah. too once I get to a final gallery probably. I could see myself using it, just importing images and then going home and then sitting on the couch, you know, while I'm watching TV and just go through that set of images, like that soccer shoot that I did. Yeah. It was much easier, you know, during the commercials, which I hate watching commercials anyway, during the commercials I would flip through the photos and so... I, I could see doing that. Because then it goes, the changes go right back to your Lightroom on your computer. So exactly. that's good too. Exactly. So yeah, I think that'll be the way to go for it, at least for the for the near future. I think that is it for today. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks guys. Keep shooting. See ya.
Good. You know, you looked at the lens the whole time. You were making me laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, they can't see you. Hold on, hold on. Let me do this. <laughs> 